Hello there! You might have seen this picture of a white starship nose cone with a NASA worm logo on it. The reason behind it is not publicly known, but I would assume that it's a marketing mock-up for the next stage of Artemis contracts. Whatever the SpaceX's motivation is to paint it right now, it is not what this video is about. What I want to talk about is why the official Artemis starship is white, while all the other starships are unpainted polished steel. It looks cool, but... Certainly SpaceX wouldn't do things just because they look cool. Well, I stand corrected. But there is more than that behind the decision. And since this is spaceflight explained, you can bet that there is physics involved. So let's dive into some thermodynamics and do a comparison between polished stainless steel and white thermal paint. Space travel. The idea of humans flying in complex machines through the vacuum of space. Well, unfortunately, this sentence is not only beautiful and inspiring, but also a headache for any thermodynamics engineer. You see, humans generate heat. All the wires, machines and computers generate heat. The sun, which keeps our planet warm, continuously heats up the spacecraft. And because you're traveling in vacuum, None of the usual ways of getting rid of heat works. For example, let's consider the processor of your computer. The heat from the CPU is transferred to solid metal of the heatsink using conduction. And then the air is forced to go through the heatsink, transferring the heat to the air, also conduction. And then the hot air leaves the computer, taking the heat with it, that is convection. None of this is available in the vacuum of space. All that we can do is to dissipate the heat by radiation. So, let's describe it in more detail. Thermal radiation is a part of electromagnetic spectra, mostly in ultraviolet, visible, and near-infrared wavelengths. It is not exactly intuitive, and the physicists were struggling with it until the beginning of the 20th century. But the resulting math is actually quite simple. Thermal radiation is emitted by every object that has temperature higher than absolute zero. The hotter an object is, the more heat it radiates. If we know the temperature of an object, we can tell its radiating spectra, that is, how much energy at each wavelength it radiates. This knowledge is mostly used in the opposite way, to tell the temperature based on the measured spectra. It is used by modern infrared thermometers, but also to estimate the temperature and the type of the distant stars. It is also why we can sometimes estimate the temperature of an object based on its color, for example when working with hot metals. A simplistic radiation model for an object that does absorb all light is called blackbody radiation. A generalized version to objects that can partially reflect light is called graybody radiation. This model tells us that L equals to A times sigma times epsilon times T to the power of fourth. The L is the amount of thermal radiation emitted, A is the object's surface area, sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, epsilon is the emissivity of the object, and T is the object's temperature in kelvins. What is counterintuitive is that the heat radiation increases with the power of fourth of the temperature. This is interesting in the context of Starship's atmospheric re-entry and the decision to use stainless steel instead of, let's say, aluminum. The temperature at which you can safely and reliably use the 304L stainless steel is 1090 degree kelvin, but for aluminum it's only 450 degree kelvin. That means that when heated roughly to the maximum service temperature, the stainless steel can get rid of heat faster. More specifically, 1090 divided by 450 to the power of fourth, which is 34 times faster. Notice that I ignored the emissivity parameter epsilon, which depends on the surface finish or paint. This is where the white paint will make a difference. But first, since we now know how to compute the rate of the spacecraft cooling by radiation, we have to address the opposite problem, the heat input. Let's make this problem as simple as we can by accounting only for the heat received from the sun. I know this is highly optimistic and if we included all the machines and humans on board, or even the reflections from the moon's surface, the resulting amount of heat input would be much higher. But as you will see in the end, even this optimistic simplification will convincingly show the point. Normally in space, the amount of direct sunlight that a spacecraft receives can be well regulated by changing the orientation of the spacecraft with respect to the sun. For instance, on the way to the moon or Mars, the Starship can turn its engines towards the sun to minimize the exposed area and use the engines as a heat shield. 
This cannot be done when landed on the moon, and it gets worse because the predicted landing location is the South Pole. The sun will be non-stop illuminating the whole side of the starship. This is great for the solar panels on the nose cone, which can continuously generate the power, but not so great for keeping the inside of the starship cool. So how much heat does starship on the south pole of the moon absorb? As always, let's simplify this a little bit by assuming that the starship is just a large hollow cylinder. Because except the nose cone, it basically is. And I do not see any additional large elements like solar panels or radiators sticking out. We will also assume that the density of solar radiation is the same on the moon as in the low Earth orbit, because the difference is fraction of a percent. The resulting formula is actually very intuitive. We know the density of solar radiation on Earth's orbit, and we can just multiply it by the area of the starship that faces the sun, and the ratio of the light that is absorbed by the surface material. So when we write this down, the solar radiation absorbed equals to As times S, times alpha, where As is the area perpendicular to solar radiation, S is the solar constant, which is the measured solar radiation density at the distance of Earth, and alpha is the absorptance of the material or paint. With the two formulas, this one for solar absorption and the previous one for thermal emission, we can do something really interesting. If we assume that the starship was on the moon for long enough to achieve a stable temperature, it will be in a state of thermal equilibrium, when the rate of solar heating equals the rate of radiative cooling. I need a new napkin. In thermal equilibrium, the two rates will be identical, and we can actually take the two formulas and put them into a single equation. This results in the solar absorption As, S alpha on the left, equals to the thermal radiation on the right, A sigma epsilon t to the power of fourth. I tried to visualize the situation in this drawing, which shows a starship cylinder approximation from the top. The energy from the sun, denoted S, comes from the side, because the starship is on the south pole of the moon. The area where the sunlight hits the cylinder is labeled AS. Part of the incoming energy is reflected, but the other part is absorbed. The ratio of the absorbed energy is the alpha. This heats up the cylinder. On the thermal emission part, the cylinder has a temperature T and radiates from its surface area A. Technically, the inner cylindrical area will be radiating heat as well, but it just bounces on the inside until it gets reabsorbed again. The rate of radiation is also dependent on surface emissivity epsilon. Sigma is just a constant. When the thermal equilibrium is reached, this whole system is in balance, because if the object heats up to higher temperature than the equilibrium, its thermal radiation rate increases and it cools back down again. From the equation, we can actually compute the temperature at which the starship will achieve thermal equilibrium. Solving for temperature T, we get that T equals to the fourth root of As divided by A times S divided by sigma times alpha divided by epsilon. Let's look at these elements individually and then plug in the numbers for polished stainless steel versus white thermal paint. The first part of this formula is the ratio between the area of the starship perpendicular to the sun divided by the total area of the starship. Again, we assume for simplicity the shape of a hollow cylinder. The area perpendicular to the sun, in case of a cylinder, is just a diameter times height, and the total area is circumference times height, which is pi times diameter times height. We see that these elements cancel each other out and we get 1 divided by pi. The second part of the formula is just a ratio of two constants, the solar constant, which is 1360.8 watts per square meter, and the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which is 5.6 times 10 to the power of minus 8. So these two parts combined are just a constant, which equals to 7.64 times 10 to the power of 9. And finally, the last part is purely about the surface finish or paint. It is the ratio between the surface absorptance and its emittance, or, in other words, how easily the surface heats up by sun radiation, divided by how easily it cools down by radiating the heat away. To keep the resulting temperature as low as possible, the absorptance needs to be low and the emittance high. Thanks to a great article from NASA's Goddard Center, an article two months older than me, we know exactly what the absorptance and emittance values are for polished stainless steel.
The values for one of the commonly used white thermal paints are available on the supplier's website. As always, the references to both are down in the video description. Here are the numbers. For Polish stainless steel, the absorptance is 42% and the emittance is 11%. For AZ93 white thermal paint, the absorptance is 15% and the emittance is 91%. As we mentioned before, we want the absorptance to be low and the emittance to be high. It's not looking good for Polish stainless steel. Let's plug in the numbers into our derived equation. When we do that, the thermal equilibrium for our simplified cylindrical starship is 413 Kelvin for Polish stainless steel and 188 Kelvin for white thermal paint. These numbers are only a lower bound on the temperature because we accounted only for the direct heat from the sun. If we would account for the radiation from the moon surface, the heat from all the humans and computers, the temperature would only go up. So to answer the question from the video title, why is the lunar starship white? Well, without the thermal paint, everything on a starship would be above 140 degrees Celsius, which would be deadly to any future astronauts. And because the lunar version of the starship does not have to worry about what happens with the paint on atmospheric re-entry, it's an obvious choice. This is also the reason why the International Space Station has so many parts, including the radiators, painted white. Interestingly enough, if the only goal is to maximize emissivity and absorptance does not need to be considered, black thermal coatings can achieve emissivity of over 94%. It is the reason why the famous SR-71 Blackbird's pipeline was painted black instead of any other color. It needed to get rid of a lot of heat. Thank you so much for watching this video. I want to apologize for the audio quality. I'm still traveling, so I had to record everything on the stock camera microphone. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy my previous work in higher quality. For example, a detailed breakdown on physics and protection against orbital debris, or why SpaceX switched from 301 steel to 304L stainless steel. Again, thank you very much for watching.